Okay. Go ahead. We call the meeting to order. Meeting properly noted. You muted? He's got to unmute it. Unmute yourself. Pardon? Click the microphone in the corner. The bottom left corner. There you are. Well, we unmuted. I know. Now try it. Okay. Are we in? Okay, was this, I call this meeting to order. Was this meeting properly noticed? Yes, it was. We need a roll call of members. Here. 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 Please stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I need a, a motion to approve the agenda as written. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> Approval of the minutes. I move to approve the minutes from the July meeting as uh, written. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We will go on with the public hearings. The Flinty family. The first applicant is the Flinty family. Uh, they are not on the agenda for the town until August 17th. So I would request that you table the application until September. I moved until September. Is that the Fluente family? I second the motion. Motion's been made, moved to, made to move the meeting to September. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> Second item on the agenda, Derek Alexander. The next applicant is Derek Alexander. He is, he has filed an administrative appeal under the shoreline zoning uh, ordinance in reference to uh, my decision regarding an allowable use on a property located in the town of Rome on lot 62 Essex edition to Lake Camelot. The address is 913 Plymouth Court. Uh, this is the first time that uh, Mr. Alexander, you are on the meeting? I am. Okay. Uh, I believe this is the first time most of the Board has heard a appeal. Uh, briefly, um, I have made a, our office has made a decision uh, regarding whether or not keeping beehives on a property is an allowable use under the shoreline zoning ordinance. Uh, Mr. Alexander believes that I misinterpreted the ordinance or does not agree with it. Uh, we can both give our um, Sides to how that decision was arrived at, and it is up to the board to determine whether I applied the ordinance correctly and interpreted the ordinance correctly. Um, I'll leave it up to the board whether you want Mr. Alexander or myself to state our sides first. Can you repeat what he wants to use that for? 
Currently, Mr. Alexander has um, a few beehives on his property. And the decision that our office made was uh, beekeeping is not a permitted use in shoreland zoning under recreational residential. Okay. I have a, uh, other than that, there is a requirement that there's 10,000 10, square feet for four hives. And there has to be adequate water on the property to accommodate this. If this isn't met, he's already violating. I don't know how many hives he has. Our ordinance doesn't get into details about how you have to keep bees. The only question here that the board is looking at is, okay. did I apply the ordinance correctly? Whether the use is allowed or not. Okay. The ordinance is pretty cut and dry, isn't it? Um, I feel that's how I, I mean, I came to the decision based on the ordinance. Mr. Alexander feels differently and he will explain why he doesn't think I interpreted the ordinance correctly. So why don't we hear from uh, Mr. Alexander? Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Gentlemen. Um, um, it's going to take me probably about five, 10 minutes to go through. Um, is there a button that I can submit exhibits to you guys or how do I do that? Should I just send them to Dustin? Is that the easiest way to do it? Are you logged in through a computer or on your phone? On the computer. All right, so if you, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is start your video. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. And then you can, if you have the documents already on your computer, at the bottom you should see a green button that says share screen. Okay. You click that, we're gonna see okay. whatever's on your computer. Okay, sounds good. That yeah, seems to work. So good morning, I'm Derek Alexander. I'm the property owner of uh, 913 uh, Plymouth Court, Coos, Wisconsin. Um, so it kind of all started uh, on and around uh, March 26th, when you... announced that the owner of Rome Realty listed um, Chad and Michelle Duffin's house for sale Can you on the market. pause one second? Yes. We have a technical. The volume? Yeah, oh. hold on. Am I too loud or too quiet? <laughs> Test it now. See if somebody say something. To Would you say sound? something? Okay, now. Down a little bit down. Sorry, I wear hearing aids. It's a little difficult. Okay. Yeah. You can just slide that back. Okay. Would you uh, like me to start from the beginning, or did you catch some of what I said so far? I didn't hear anything from the beginning. Oh, okay, I'll start from the beginning then. No worries. Okay. Good morning, I'm Derek Alexander. I'm the property owner of 913 Plymouth Court in Coosa, Wisconsin. Um, on and around March 26th, Al Schmidt, the owner of Rome Realty, listed with listed Chad and Michelle Duffin's house for sale on 1915 Plymouth Court in Coosa, Wisconsin, which is just to the west of my property. Um, so on April 15th, um, my parents had received a call from Al Schmidt's clerk asking to get a hold of my, get my telephone so that Al could reach me about selling my home. Uh, my parents provided the, the clerk my number and around on and around April 16th, I received a call from Al Schmidt and uh, he was asking if I was interested in selling my home. I was kind of unsure about the sale, but Al insisted that if I was, I'd need to remove my beehives from the property. At this point, I told Al Schmidt that I wasn't interested in selling my home and around on and around uh, April 17th, a police officer entered my property uh, from the west side of my home. Uh, he proceeded, proceeded to speak with my son and eventually came to the front of the home where I was at just inside the garage and indicated he was doing a routine check on my property. I believe someone from the Rome Realty had contacted the Rome police 
for an investigation of my property and my bees. Since there wasn't a report filed, I'm assuming that the police officer saw no issue with my property and didn't file a report. Though the records, records acquired from the town of Rome said there was a call made to the town clerk relaying information about beehives on my property on and around June 5th of 2020. Um, and the clerk was gonna get a hold of Greg Gronick, who is the, the zoning administrator at the town of Rome. Um, in conversations I had with Greg, he indicated that he had discussions with Dustin down at Adams County Planning and Zoning about my property. And Greg also indicated that he had sent someone out to my property. And in fact, they saw beehives along my garage. Those were his exact words. In fact, there haven't been beehives along my garage since 2016, when a neighbor to the east of me and 911 Plymouth Court, Teresa Frida, asked me to, if I could place the hives um, that they were on a side of the house that wasn't facing her property in which I immediately complied and, uh, with the request of my neighbor and, and moved the hives. I am in doubt that Greg or one of the agents of the zoning department actually visited my property because they didn't even know where the, the hives were. On June 11th, I received a letter from Dustin Grant. Um, let me show you the attachment here. Let me share my screen. Uh, uh, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. Does Dustin just want me to send these to him? I think everyone's on mute, so I'm not hearing anything. You can. I'm okay. looking at how to do that. Dustin, I'm gonna, these are all going off to you right now. Um, and I can paraphrase a lot of this, but at least the documentation is, is to you. Back here. Um, um, so I received a letter from Dustin and, and my exhibit one or exhibit A is um, the letter I received from Dustin um, on June 11th. Um, so he was informing me that I was in non-compliance of my property as relates to the county shoreline wetland and habitat protection um, ordinance section uh, 396.59. Um, and then he provided me a copy of that ordinance, um, which is exhibit, I, I'm providing it as exhibit B, which he provided me. Um, so I called Dustin on the 17th of June when on and around when I received the letter. I was around 2.15 p.m. to discuss the letter he had sent me. In that conversation, I indicate there, I was not considered a beekeeping according to the state of Wisconsin. Um, in the definitions, which is exhibit D, in the definitions of the ordinance, um, it does go into beehives, which relates back to a state statute um, relating to what is a beekeeper, which I am not. Um, I don't take anything from the bee, bo bee boxes I provide for the bees which is similar practice to those in the Lakes District um, that provide bird houses, bird feeders, bird boxes for all types of birds to help them thrive in the natural world. So Dustin said that he would issue another letter indicating a different reason for non-compliance. And I received that letter via email within an hour indicating that beehives were not permitted use. That's exhibit E, um, permitted use of my property. Um, I asked Dustin if he had actually investigated the property, he, and I believe he indicated that he had not, but that his counterpart at Town Own did do an investigation. I indicated to Dustin that I did not want to remove the bee houses from my property, and I asked if there was any way that I can keep them. He indicated there was not any way to keep bee houses on my property. I indicated to Dustin that the Shoreland Wetland and Habitat Ordinance Section 396-59 um, under subsection N that I have established a private and natural 
outdoor educational area on my property. And that is, let me see here. Exhibit E shows that that area on my you property, it's in purple. You can now share your screen. Oh. Or you should be able to. Let me just and while we're while we're paused here, I have a question: Is, is the uh, violation of the ordinance because it's too close to the water, or just on the property in general? It is on the property. It is not a permitted use. Okay. Let me see if I can share this, guys. Oh, there we go. So this is. Uh, Exhibit E. So this just shows the purple area around my property I have designated as a private outdoor and educational area on my property. And that's around the front of my property and the lake is down here at the bottom of my property. <clears throat> so, just in question whether this is an acceptable use, I indicated that it is listed as an acceptable use of my property. I indicated that I actually had about six kids on my property just a couple of days ago and we're talking to them about honeybees and why they are critical to the lake shores of Wisconsin lakes. Dustin, Dustin did ask me if I had any lesson plans for the educational area and I indicated that I did have several plans, lesson plans. I'm not a teacher by trade. Um, but this is, this is uh, one of the questions he asked me. Dustin indicated that this wasn't, in his opinion, acceptable use, and indicated that I could not establish a private, natural, outdoor recreational area, educational area on my property. But again, this is listed as an acceptable use as defined in the ordinance. And I indicated to Dustin that I have, in fact, established a private, natural, and outdoor educational area on my property. Um, Dustin didn't agree uh, with that, um, but as of June 24, 2020, I had not been provided any rebuttal evidence or exact definitions as to why I couldn't establish this allowable use on my property. This again shows, um, I believe, a violation of the Equal Protection Clause in which the county and town officials are working together and are again searching uh, for non-acceptable uses of my property. Um, in order to have me remove the bee houses. Um, and yet they promote other non-acceptable uses uh, in the lakeshore and, and district properties with the use of bird houses. I believe there has been um, some searching and seeking to find uh, non-compliant uses. Um, they've been working with the, the Rome administrator um, because I received a non-compliance letter from uh, Greg on the dated the same day um, and I received it approximately on the same day, which is Exhibit F. Um, the zoning administration of the town road indicated that I had, was a different non-acceptable use of my property um, as an apiary, um, which again, I am not according to the state of Wisconsin. Um, the town of Rome um, on their Pinterest website promotes cleaning, caring of birdhouses, erecting and construction of birdhouses, and how to make your property attract birds. And that's Exhibit G. I don't have any specifically against birds, but their feces excrement in most instances is highly toxic, toxic and poisonous to our family pets and to humans. In some places, birds have been eradicated in, in Wisconsin as nuisances. In closing, before I even took ownership of my property, on May, in May of 2015, I received a letter from Matt Bramer from the Adams County Planning and Zoning Department indicating my property was in violation of the Shoreland Wetland Habitat Protection Ordinance in that letter, there were threats of fines if I didn't comply with the ordinances. I spent a lot of time working with Matt to develop a plan to bring my property into compliance. I worked with Matt. He provided me a list of plants, Exhibit H, which is um, the standard, I believe, that he had sent out for us. Let me just pull that up. So this is going to be part of exhibit H. Let me just share that, sorry. So this is the buffer pack that uh, Greg had, or I'm sorry, that Matt had provided me back in 
2015. Um, it just shows, um, you know, the, the cost sharing types. And then 27 different plants that are, um, that are uh, promoted by the DNR and the County of Adams to be planted in the buffer zone, um, again, to, to prevent erosion and to prevent fertilizers and all the things that happen when um, there is erosion at the shoreline. So these came as high recommendations from uh, the county and DNR as plants I should be planting. Um, and specifically in the buffer zone to help protect my investment in my property and prevent Lake Camelot from becoming an impaired waterway. And so I've attached exhibit um, I and on page seven of that PDF, um, let me pull that up quick. This is the adopted land and water resource management plan, 2016, 2025 of Adams County. So on page, let's page seven of the, the PDF, page three of the actual report. Um, it, it mentions in here, um, impaired waterways about halfway down. And you can see that Lake Arrowhead and Lake Sherrod and Friendship Lakes were newly listed in 2014 as impaired waterways. And it is expected that Lake Camelot may be listed by 2016. And that's the, the county's report. So I've also attached the uh, a basic impaired waterway list from the Wisconsin DNR website, Exhibit J for Lake Arrowhead and the impaired waterway of Lake Sherwood, Exhibit K. Um, both of those are in the town of Rome and, and right next to, uh, or right in the, the 14 mile watershed that Lake Camelot's in also. So I worked long and hard with man developing a plan for my buffer zone for the greater good of our community and our lakes. And even though my property showed in 1972 that all of the shoreline was a sandy beach, I still went ahead and followed uh, the advice of uh, the pamphlet I got. In the packet I received from Matt, there were listings of 27 <coughs> native plants for inside and outside the buffer zone that Adams County and the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources considered native and promoted for the health of our lakes. Of those 27 plants, 23 of them need pollination from honeybees. Some of these species are considered critical for pollinators and are specifically planted in order to attract large numbers of honeybees. In that list, there is also species that are planted in order to promote colonies of bees to live in, create homes within those plants on our shorelands. So I took this information provided and promoted by Adams County and the DNR as something that I could do to help promote the well-being of Lake Camelot. And I could go on and on for hours and show you hundreds of documents permitted by the, the state and federal agencies on how we must protect honeybees as pollinators. And I'm sure many of you are aware of why other departments and agencies within the lake, local, state, and federal government promote the livelihood of honeybees. Matt, Bremer, Matt Bremer's, um, while, while Matt Bremer was working in the planning and zoning department and provided this list of 23 of 27 species of plants, that over 85% of these plants are considered, are not considered to be self-pollinating. And he promoted those for planting on our properties. I'm only following the long lasting practice of stewardship and, and sustainability that is promoted by the federal, state, and local governments as it relates to honeybees. There's some misconception that honeybees sting for no reason like wasps, hornets, species, but in fact only sting in order to protect the hive. Wasps and hornet species will sting multiple times and continue to live unlike honeybees, which can only sting once and in doing so commit the, the act that kills them. Honeybees only go to areas where there are plants and flowers that need pollination or there is nectar to collect, in which my closest neighbors have little or nothing that would attract honeybees to their properties. I.e. the bees don't actually have a reason to go on to their property and in almost every case leave the hive and fly almost straight up into the air and proceed to an area which provides them uh, forage. In fact, I am highly allergic to wasp and hornet stings, partly in fact that they can sting, multi sting you multiple times. I carry an EpiPen with me at all times. 
I do sympathize, sympathize with anyone who is allergic, but I believe honeybees are docile in nature and do not pose a clear and imminent threat to my health. I believe since I have had honeybees around my property that they have kept the hornets and wasps that are so prevalent in our local area at bay, since they are mortal enemies of each other. In providing bees a place to live on my property in which I take nothing from them, I believe in fact, I protected the most precious investment of our local property owners that live near, our, live near my property. I provide pollen, a pollinator that enhances the growth of the plants and flowers that, were, that need the bee's pollination in which those plants protect our waterway of Lake Camelot from becoming impaired like Adams County predicted starting in 2016, which is not coincidental with when I had my first hives on my property. I would ask that the check for the cost of the appeal be returned with the amount of the cost of these action returned to me as soon as possible and that the county cease and desist any further action with my property as it pertains to the honeybees. That's it, thank you. Okay, well, <coughs> uh, I, <coughs> excuse me. I have to, as long as you've gotten off the track about water quality and good lake management, I have a question for you. How many steps have you taken to ensure that the hives are safe? The hives are off my property line by a significant amount. I don't have the exact data, but I believe no, I'm not referring. I'm not referring to location of your hives. Do you have a box to contain the swarming when they swarm? And they do swarm. Do you have all the facilities to collect them back? I do. Pardon? I do. Okay. Do you also, did you also communicate with all your neighbors before you started this? Um, I believe my neighbors, well, I talked to Hazel Jolliffe, um, um, the, the neighbors to the west, um, uh, Chad and Michelle, were not very often, but I believe we had a discussion about it. Um, I, Miss Frida, I saw her on a very rare occasion. Um, I think she came up maybe once a year. Um, her brother comes down occasionally to look at her property. Um, and I didn't have a conversation um, with the, pro uh, the property that Dave and Sandy have now, which is several houses down. Okay. How many hives do you have? I have six hives. One that's, um, it's right now just holding bees. And how big is your lot? I'm not really sure. I mean, Dustin, I don't know if you know the exact acreage or so of my lot. I don't, I honestly, I don't know that size. It's a, it's a common size for like Camelot. Yeah, it's a fairly typical half acre-ish. Is it an acre? Okay. Probably, probably Because half. there's a very strict, re there's a strict requirement by the bee keepers association as to saturation of hives per square footage. You just want to maintain that. Uh, what other question that I have for you? Of course, you have adequate like point water that, resources. I would like to point out, Bob, that I am the only beekeeper, um, according to uh, Drift, the Drift website, in the town of Rome um, for bees. Um, I, I check that website regularly. The website's called Drift Watch. Can I make one more point, Dustin? Okay. We had a similar situation. I'm on the. I was on the uh, Lake Mason Management District Board, and uh, we had a person who decided they're going to put four hives on their property. And citing what was going on here, they were required to remove them. Now, Lake Mason's an impaired lake. And the impact of what they had would not be beneficial to the degree that they were allowed to keep them. 
in uh, <coughs> one lot on the whole lake system of Lake Camelot that's doing the beekeeping and the pollinization of good plants and everything else. I think in the vast scheme of things, there's not good reason to omit what Jason, uh, excuse me, Dustin has found in the ordinances. Bob, you had a question? Derek, does your Lake Camelot Association covenants have any restrictions on any of this? I'm not aware of any. I know the town of Rome has restrictions on how many dogs and cats you can have. I'm not sure about bees, but I agree with, with Bob Krause that uh, I'm not sure that's the right place for it, Derek. Uh, Derek, I have, I have a couple of questions also. When, when you initially put bees on that property, uh, is there a permit process or how'd you go about doing that? Um, no, I called the town of Rome and there was no issue with bees as well as I was told, um, according to the, the chief of police. Do you have your state permit for this? I do not. I'm not considered a beekeeper. I do not have 25 hives and they are not used for my livelihood. I do not take anything from these bees. These bees are provided homes only, which does not make me a beekeeper. Mm -hmm. I use natural hygienic <laughs> bees. Then, then I've interpreted the whole thing backwards because when I read the statute, it said anybody who keeps beehives on their property, whether it's for cash gain or for recreation are required to have a permit. You are not unless you have more than 25 bees or you move bees in and out of the state of Wisconsin or you use them for your I, I didn't, for monetary gain. I, well, I'm sorry, but I didn't see a restriction on a number of hives. It just said anybody who keeps hive beehives on their property, it didn't say if it was for gain or anything else. I believe it was so in state I may have interpreted. I may have interpreted wrong, but... Uh, I, I I still believe you need a permit and you need to inform your insurance company for the liability aspect of it. Have you done that? I I don't recall if I have or not. I'm just looking up the ordinance here. Or word usage. Well, there's a, word usage of, of, of there's a certain amount of there's a certain amount of liability that comes with beekeeping, okay? This doesn't well, relate to Adams County, but Portage County, Wisconsin went through this. And at that time, if you check with them, they will tell you that they considered the bees wild animals, okay? That's the classification he gave them. I don't think that this is carried through to Adams County, but it's interesting that they did that. Correct. Um, and that shows you the potential danger of raising of having the beehives on your property, whether it's recreational or however you want to do it. But aren't we trying to decide what the what the ordinance states? Um, I think that's that's the kind of the issue here. I have not read the ordinance, so I I don't know what it says. But um, Bob Bob Kraus has had a little experience with that reading uh, reading the ordinance. Um, it seems like the ordinance, uh, if it talks about having bees on your property, uh, it, it doesn't say whether it's allowed or not, but if there, if there is a, uh, a space requirement for hives of bees, I think that would be stated in the ordinance. It doesn't sound like it is. Dustin, do you know if it is? Uh, it is not. I guess I would like my opportunity to, before, we're, the entire conversation so far has been really off track. Yes, um, yes. The only question we're we're dealing with is, what does right. the ordinance say? Permitted right. use. 
and right. it's, it is not a permitted use. Well, and I guess I would like my opportunity to defend that position. Um, and I'm going to share my screen also, I think. Well, that was a point I was trying to make. I, we're talking about the ordinance and the interpretation of the ordinance for Derek, and I, I don't know if we've gotten there yet. No, and that's what I need to, I guess that's my purpose in this. Um, first thing I'm going to start with, you should all see my screen. Can you see it? Okay. Yeah, got it. Uh, the, the parcel that's highlighted right there is Mr. Alexander's right. parcel. Okay. Uh, the property is zoned recreational residential. That is under the shoreland wetland and habitat protection uh, ordinance. Right. Once that is established, we can then go to what are the allowable uses in that zoning district. Uh, the, what? Oh, Got it. Hold on. He needs a piece of paper. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm reading it. Okay. Um, so this first section, who's not muted? Can you know, Bob? Yeah. Bob, can you mute yourself? Can you mute yourself? Mute. Okay, so the first section, everybody can hear me. Um, the first section is general requirements or the general provisions. The first line in use restrictions, the following use restrictions and regulations shall apply. Only those principal uses specified for a district and their essential services shall be permitted in that district. So the uses specified in the recreational residential district are listed here. Uh, so you're, you start with your houses, single family dwellings, home occupations, domestic animals, accessory structures, essentially utility services, signs, the hiking, fishing, trapping, hunting, that types of things, harvesting of wild crops, and it specifically says such as uh, and they're all plants. The practice of silver culture, including the planting, thinning, and harvesting of timber, construction and maintenance of duck blinds, piers, docks, walkways, maintenance, repair, replacement, and reconstruction of existing uh, county, state, and bridges. And then uh, the final one, N, is the uh, establishment and development of public and private parks and recreation areas, uh, and the natural and outdoor education areas that. Mr. Alexander was talking about. Any private recreation or wildlife area must be used exclusively for that purpose. So then, the reason I, one of the, the primary decision, reasons I made the decision was under ag use, beekeeping is the first thing listed. Egg use was not a listed use that was permitted in recreational residential zoning. In contrast, under general purpose zoning district and a special exception, which is on my screen now under B, egg uses is something that you can apply for a special exception for. That's not listed in any of the other districts. So it's 
the way zoning ordinances generally work, a use is permitted if it's listed. If it's not listed, it is not permitted. Now, neither apiaries, beekeeping, ag uses, none of those are listed as a permitted use in recreational residential zoning. At that point is why I started a violation proceeding against this. As a point of interest, beekeeping under Wikipedia, maintenance of bee colonies, uh, commonly in man-made hives. Uh, definitions on that, maintenance of honeybee colonies, commonly in hives. I, I believe having six hives on your property, even having one hive on your property, if it's in a man-made structure, falls under the definition of beekeeping. And as I just showed, is not an allowable use. Uh, I'm not arguing that bees are a great thing, but the definition in the ordinance and the, or the allowable uses in the ordinance still say what they say. Um, if we wanna have a conversation about changing the law, that's a different conversation. Um, I guess that's, I do have two pieces of correspondence that as I stated, really don't Pertained, I mean, it, it, it pertains to this specific case. It's, it's kind of irrelevant. One of the neighbors on the adjacent lot, Teresa Frida, bees are a nuisance to her and others in neighborhood when outside they swarm. And then I received a letter from Hazel Jalifi. Dear Mr. Grant, I'm writing in reply to a letter that I received on Friday, July 24th in regard to the public hearing scheduled for Monday, August 3rd, involving 913 Plymouth Court, Town of Rome. I am not technically savvy and would not attempt to participate in the teleconference. However, I would like to voice my opinion. Although the notice does not say what is involved, I suspect it is in regard to the honeybees that Derek Alexander has on his property. I thoroughly enjoy the, these bees. They bring me smiles as they visit my hummingbird feeders. I appreciate seeing them as they pollinate my flowers. A true joy with the vanishing of the species. My observation tells me that they are the busy, are too busy gathering nectar to be in the attack mode. I do not share that opinion about the yellow jackets paper wasps and ground wasps that frequent my property regularly each summer and fall. Sincerely, Hazel Jaleffe. Uh, 917, so yeah, it'd be right close by. Uh, the other thing I did want to add because he brought it up, so there is the town of Rome. They do have the, they do have their own zoning ordinance. Uh, essentially, in the state statutes, it says that anything that's regulated under a county zoning ordinance, county shoreland zoning ordinance, uh, the county, the town cannot enforce any restrictions that the county already regulates. So in this matter, the town of Rome uh, doesn't really have jurisdiction over the allowable use because it is something that our ordinance regulates. Uh, so the whole process of the police going out there is all irrelevant. The question is, did I reinterpret the ordinance correctly? And that's all I have. And now I gotta figure out how to stop sharing. Okay. If I may, I'd like to add uh, just a few things to, to what, or some potential rebuttals to what Justin, or Dustin had to say. So in, um, I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, hold on one second, oh, the chairman sure. speaking. Oh, sure. Derek, we're doing some technical difficulties here.
There you go. Okay. Okay. The motion that we're going to vote on pertains to whether or not he's in compliance with the shorthand zoning. No? No. The I thought you were in, the question was, was he in compliance? No. I've, well, sort of. The question is, am I applying the ordinance correctly? Is it possible, Dustin, that I could just provide okay. just a quick brief rebuttal? Just on then, our, then our question, then our motion has to read that we approve your interpretation of the shoreland zoning. Okay, not that the compliance part, but he's questioning your interpretation. Correct. And Mr. Alexander did want to say something, or he wants to respond to what I said. That's up to you as the chairman. Okay. All right, gentlemen, we need a, a motion on this. Did you want Mr. Alexander to respond? All right. Just to talk. I can hear this. Mr. Alexander wants to. This is crazy. Well, I don't know why it keeps changing on you. I've got Bob on my head now. The other guy on my computer. <laughs> Um, okay, no, yeah. Okay. Did you uh, understand what I was saying for the motion? Well, I, I, I think we need to hear from Mr. Alexander first and then decide exactly what we're trying to decide today. Mr. Alexander. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm going to start sharing my screen. So I wanted to, to just to point out that, again, the, the, the debate is under uh, subsection N um, in the establishment of development of public and private parks and recreation areas, the boating access sites, uh, a natural and outdoor educational area, an historic scientific area, wildlife refuges, game preserves, and private wildlife habitats, provided that any private recreation and wildlife habitat must be exclusively used for that purpose, which this is not. This is a private or natural and outdoor private educational area. I didn't fill anything or excavate anything to, to put this in. I'm um, an ditch an excavator, dredge or dam or dike anything either um, to provide this uh, outdoor private natural um, recreation area. So this is the word usage definitions. I mean, it's provided by state statutes. Um, and the following activities um, in beekeeping is listed as, as sub, uh, under subsection A, B, beekeeping. Then when I go to um, the PDF of the state statutes, let me just zoom in here. So agricultural use means any of the following, any of the following activities conducted for the purpose of producing income or livelihood, neither which I take anything from these bees. And that's beekeeping. So by definition, underneath the state statute, I am not considered a beekeeper because I am not using it for income or livelihood. And that's under the state statute. And that is how it's defined under word usage in Adams County as agricultural use. Right. So I am not considered a beekeeper by the state of Wisconsin in my interpretation of it. What chapter is that exhibit D from? I had asked you that during a phone conversation. You weren't oh. able to tell me. Oh, five, four, four or five, nine definitions. I believe that's chapter, Adams chapter, County. Chapter 405 does not apply in this case. The only definition. But that is the only 
word definition for beekeeping because there is no word definition for beekeeping in the actual ordinance. In the shoreline wetland habitat protection ordinance, it's right there. Correct. There is, there is no um, right there. definition, and there is no definition of private, natural, and outdoor recreational area. There is no definition of that, so I have established one on my property. I guess my response would be is in chapter 396. Dash 93, which is definitions of the shoreland wetland habitat protection. The definition of agricultural use, beekeeping. What the definition is. And that is followed up is, by the state statute. What? And that is followed up by the state statute of ag the same definition of agricultural use is in the state statute 91, which I am not, not a beekeeper in that definition. And at this point, it's up to at this point, it's up to the committee of whether I interpret the ordinance correctly. I agree. I agree. Okay. We need a, a motion. I, 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 can the other people who are in questions? this do have a question? The you other gentlemen. If I may, I do have a couple. Uh, I do have a couple points, Bob. Before we do a motion, it's it, it seems like uh, the relief requested by Derek is that the three dollars is refunded and continue to use the property as designated, which is the interpretation of whether the or, ordinance has been interpreted properly or not. There's a lot of feedback. Um, so it seems like the issue is uh, an interpretation of the ordinance, but in the request, uh, the relief requested is the $300 uh, and they continue the property as, as designated. So, so when, we, when we vote with a motion, it's to act on the relief requested which in, in turn is an interpretation whether the ordinance was uh, properly applied. So I think the, the motion should be about the uh, relief requested. Uh, and then again, in turn, that is based on the interpretation of the implementation of the ordinance. This board does not have the authority to refund money. You, the only okay. question this board can answer is, did I apply the ordinance correctly? The only question that this board can answer, did I apply the ordinance correctly? Yes. And there are a couple of people online that would like to speak also. What? I don't know. It's a public hearing. I think Mr. Ehlert wants to speak. Hi, I'm Dennis Arts. I am the property owner of the adjacent property to the west that is just purchased next to Derek's house. Um, I guess this all started when Rome Realty put it up for sale and we, were con we contracted them to take a look at it. But uh, some of the issues we have with it is clearly said by Derek's examples. Um, he near, he, to his words, your, my closest neighbor does not have any plants or flowers, which thy bees do not migrate over there. You are correct. <laughs> the people who lived there before did not upkeep this property. You're hundred percent correct. There's no, nothing over there. It's all dead. But now that we own it, we plan on putting flowers and plants on our property, which now the bees, which are 12 feet away, will migrate over to our property. Um, so with two kids who are severely good, ill to bee stings, any kind of bee stings, doesn't matter which they are, could be fatal having swarms of bees literally 12 feet away scares the crap out of our family. The second thing that Derek stated was that, um, I guess he can help us with it. You stated that the bees don't go very far. 
on their on pollinating. Well, how far do they pollinate? How far do they go? If they stay in the net in that exact area, which is 12 feet from my house, which we have three kids. Um, the other thing that we were talking about is all the exhibits that he's showing for this ordinance is all through the egg ordinances. We're not dealing with the egg ordinances. We're dealing with the ordinance in the Lake District, not in the egg. It's totally different stuff dealing with the ordinances in egg management than it is dealing with residential areas in the Lake District. Um, so I guess for the safety of my family and other things, he stated that people put birdhouses up and that stuff, why can't he put bees? I can't find anywhere where a bird attacked a human and was killed. And I understand Derek, man, it's a beautiful thing to try to help out Lake Camelot, but I, I find it hard to believe that you're the only one in this area that's doing it because it's not allowed. The ordinance clearly states that beekeeping is not allowed. If you have a building that keeps bees, it's a beekeeper license. You have a building that's man-made and you're housing bees. It's called beekeeping. I understand the educational. I would love for people to learn more about bees in an egg system, which it clearly states under the ordinances. New Orleans clearly states it's not allowed in residential areas. Um, if you have any other questions for me, I'm gonna hang on. But at that moment in time, I'm just looking for the safety of my kids. And that, that is it. I would like to respond just briefly to Dennis's. The only reason that I brought up beekeeping and the definitions in ag is based on, that's the only definitions that are out there for beekeeping. And it's defined by the state. So it's not defined by me, it's not defined by Dustin, it's not even defined even in the ordinances inside of Adams County, it's defined by the state. And according to those state definitions, I am not a beekeeper. As far as them not flying very far, they fly very far, up to four to five miles in diameter around. It's that they fly straight up, get into the, the jet stream and move to wherever they're gonna find food. They do fly around a long ways. Um, and they're only going to stay by um, a flower for as long as it has any nectar. An average bee visits over 2,000 flowers a day. I, some neighbors say, I'd like to plant flowers. Well, you're going to have to plant a lot of flowers if one bee can visit 2,000 flowers a day. So yes, would the bees go to a flower that's on your property? Potentially, yeah. But they're going to be there for less than probably 30 seconds, and then they're going to leave. And if you plant 2,000 flowers, you may have one bee there for an entire day. If you plant 2,000 flowers and we have bees there, they're gonna all be there and they're gonna be gone in 30 seconds. So as far as the bees coming to your property, yes. And once I remove my bees, you're still gonna have natural bees that live in the area. They're still gonna come to your property. So you're inviting bees to your property by planting flowers. Not, not just my bees, any wild hives that are in the area, which we know there are. Correct, but I think my whole thing is there's a couple bees migrating into our flowers, not six hives of bees. I don't, and maybe you could fill us in, Derek. How many bees do you actually have on site? I, I've never counted them, to be honest. I, I have no okay. idea. Um, several okay. thousand, I'm sure. So if you have uh, 200,000 flowers, they're gonna be there no, no. for a day, potentially. But I don't think you're gonna be able to plant 200,000 flowers. Um, just my opinion, maybe you are going to be able to, but I don't think you're going to be able to. So it'd be there for the entire day. But again, they, they're only going to go to where there's nectar and a flower does not have very much nectar and it's not going to stay there very long. And again, okay. they don't want to attack you because they're getting the nectar and they're going back to their hive. Um, okay. Wasps and I guess that, I'll go back. There. I'll go back. Gentlemen, to Justin's gentlemen, gentlemen, this has nothing to do with the uh, question at hand. The chairman is trying to speak. It's, we're getting we're getting way off the subject here. The only thing I got to say to Mr. Alexander is, do you have a beehive on your property? Yes, I have. Are a you there? House. I have a bee house. Do you have do you have beehives on your property, right? 
I have I have houses that have bees in them, like bird houses. Right. If you're housing a bee and you're attracting them to your property and they're living there, you're a beekeeper. If you have a dog and it's on your property, you're a dog keeper. There's no question to that. We're not questioning this. We're questioning the interpretation of the ordinance as applied to your particular problem. Okay, do you have anyone else that wants to speak? Okay. I don't know. All right. Do we call for a motion? You need a motion as to whether or not the interpretation of the audience ordinance was properly applied. Yeah, I think before we make the, the motion, I think if we were sitting here for a variance or a special exception, uh, we would have to interpret uh, the input from a neighbor, which seems pretty conclusive that it is uh, a, a hardship for the neighbor. So I make a motion that we uh, deny the uh, request to continue the use of the property as is and uh, cease and desist uh, the beehives no, on the no, property. Stop. Richard, stop. That's, you cannot do that. This is not, this is an interpretation of the ord ordinance. Okay. All right. I, I rescind my, my motion. And the motion is that uh, we approve the interpretation by the Land and Water Department of Adams County. No? Don't need administrator. Let uh, me put the motion out there for you. Uh, why don't you work? Okay. I, okay. I motion, I, I'm looking for a motion <laughs> to approve Dustin's interpretation of the ordinance as written. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I will second that motion. Okay. All in favor of, please state by saying aye. Aye. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Any nays? Motion has been approved. Thank you. Teacher. Mm. Next application is Matthew Diaz. Are you online? Who? Oh. Excuse me. The next application oh. is for Matthew Macias. Are you online, Mr. Macias? The next application is for Matthew Macias. Mr. Macias, are you online? Is the applicant online? Hello. Mr. Hello. Macias? Hello. Yes, can you uh, hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Uh, yeah. you online? Uh, Mr. Macias is applying for a special exception permit. Can you mute everybody besides him? Bob and Bob. Mr. Macias is applying for a special exception permit under the comprehensive zoning ordinance to build an accessory structure prior to a primary dwelling on property located in section five, lot 15 of Rosha Creek Water subdivision, address 1388 West 11th Court, town of Preston, Adams County. Uh, Mr. Macias is online. He did drop off, before I forget, he did drop off some uh, specs on the, on the steel carport that, or the building he wants to put up. Not so important in this, but it'd be during our permitting process. 
And I don't believe I did not receive any correspondence on it. And the town? Do you have that? Mr. Macias, have you been to the town of Preston? Can you say that again? Have you been to the town of Preston? Yes, I, I live in the town of Preston. Richard, you need to mute. Hello. Uh, have you actually, actually been to their meeting where they decide where they talked about this matter? Uh, no, this this is where they just scheduled me to do. I, I filed for the uh, the permit, I believe, uh, the beginning of uh, July, maybe I think, because about four weeks ago, and uh, this was the date that they had me scheduled for the hearing. So I assumed that that was the you know. That right, was right. the next step I needed to do. You're informed, Richard. You need to mute. Uh, it, you were also informed that you had to go to the town board to get their recommendation. Oh, I I thought this is the town board. No, this is the final step in the process. The town board's the oh first. Oh my step. gosh! Uh, so Why you need to get hold of. We but, schedule you as soon as you apply, and then we also tell you to get a hold of the town board because you'd be going to their meeting in August, and then oh coming to this board. Um, so oh you would wow. need to get a hold of. I guess at this point, I would recommend tabling the application for a month, and Mr. Macias get a hold of Town of Preston, Preston to get on their agenda. Now, is there any way I could kind of speed it up? Because I, the, I mean, the people that are going to build build this carport are, you know, it's kind of in the works. I try to plan it out all at once. Because see, what had happened was, uh, you know, I'm a, a a bus mechanic by trade, but with the coronavirus, it put me out of work. So now I got like three toolboxes, and I just really they're under tarps and stuff. And I just, you know, wanted to try and get this building before, you know. So I, I thought I did all the necessary steps. I paid the three hundred. You know, and uh, and you know, I just did what they told me down there at the uh, at the county courthouse. Right. You know, but now this That's is going to throw every everything off. You know, and, and I have already put money down on the building. Well, and we we told you that when you when you would have dropped off the application, and it's in the instructions that you have to go to the town board. I believe they're right. meeting Was, Thursday, thought, Wednesday. I believe their meeting's this Wednesday. I don't know if they can get okay. you on the agenda anymore for it. Okay, so if I can get on there this Wednesday, then what do I do? I mean, would I be able to get back to you guys sooner? Our next meeting would be the first Monday of September. Oh, man. Oh, shoot. Okay, well, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do now because I got to – it puts me in a real bad spot. Um, well, I don't, I don't know. Um, can you, do you see like any, any remedies that I could, you know, no, do the kind of, uh, the board won't, the, the history of this board is that they will not hear a matter unless the town has made a decision on it or made a recommendation. Okay. On it. All right. Well, I don't know. Do you think, is there any way I could just maybe uh, get my $300 back and, uh, you know, maybe just trying to pl apply for this for another like, next year or something? Because I got to call, I got to call a bunch of people. I'm, I'm, I've lost a lot of money already now. The $300 is, we can discuss that later. Um, if you want to call me back at the office, say this afternoon. Um, and I do have okay. a potential solution for you, but um, as far as this meeting goes, there's not much the board's going to be able to do, um, but we can discuss okay. other avenues later. Right. Yeah, that, that would be, that, you know, it's a little bit kind of a, a little bit of hope there. And, and what's your name again? Dustin. Is it Dustin. Yep. Okay. And then uh, are you in planning and zoning? I'm the planning and zoning administrator. 
Okay. All right. I'll give you a call this afternoon, maybe around two or three. Sounds good. And then uh, the board, I'm still going to have the board um, or recommend that they table it um, until further notice. Okay. A table, that's meaning um, uh, defin definition of tabling is. They're not denying it. They're not approving it. We're just setting aside. The chairman made a motion to table it. And uh, Bob Benkowski seconded it. Okay, all in favor? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? And then, Mr. Macias, you and I can discuss this later. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, thank you. It goes to sleep, huh? Yeah, when you every once in a while I'll just touch that. Okay. But when you want to talk, it has to look like that. Huh? Okay. Thank you. Yep. Next item on the agenda. Clark? Mr. and Mrs. Clark, are you on the line? I think I saw you. Yeah. All right, so Mr. and Mrs. Clark own property on uh, lot 10. Can you mute them, please? Has lot 10 a Dundee addition? Uh, to Lake Camelot, and their address is 275 Derby Court. They are applying for a variance um, of the Shoreland Wetland Habitat Protection Ordinance to construct a retaining wall and a patio within the 75 foot setback of the ordinary high water mark. This is an after the fact variance. And I believe Mr. Clark's on here to speak his request. Mr. Clark, are you online? If you can, dialed, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, I I unmuted it and then it it went back to mute for some reason. I'm sorry. So we originally looked at the patio here, and um, Jason is is with me here from Green's Garden, and it ended up where the patio was starting to buckle and we were going to replace the patio and he anticipated or figured we were 75 feet back. After the fact, we can see, of course, that we're not now after we did measure it. Um, what I had measured from where the high water mark is to the edge of the patio is 65 feet. And so we're asking to receive a variance so that we can keep the patio area. This is our um, year round home. And it just made it so that previously we did have rocks on the side and when it would rain and so forth, all the sand would wash out onto the patio that was there at that time. And that's the reason we put in the walls. And so um, that's kind of where we're at right now. And I can add to that. Um, when I initially went out there for Richard, mute. 
All right. Uh, when I originally went out there for the violation, uh, I was looking at mainly the retaining walls. And the retaining walls replace the compliant method of erosion control. Uh, it's very common in the Tri Lakes area where you have stone placed at a two to one slope or shallower, uh, holding back soil or a hillside. Uh, that's what Mr. Clark had. It was, I believe his, his wife told me that it was, and like he just said, it's, it's, it was washing in and it wasn't done well. So they replaced it with a vertical wall. Uh, the, the problem I have is that they actually, there was a reason that the, the stone was in there in the first place. Uh, the house appears to have been built right at the 75 foot mark, which is the required setback, has been for many years. Um, after researching a little bit, after I had visited the property, at no point was a permit ever taken out for the patio. So it has been there for a number of years and now it's been replaced. Uh, that's why both options are, or both items are on the agenda for a variance. Uh, had, the, had the patio been there legally and they replaced it, they could have just replaced it, not a problem. Um, but because it was put there illegally and it was within that 75 foot setback, that provision no longer applies and this board would need to decide on both the wall and the patio. My concern is that there are al alternative methods for holding back that side slope to the patios. Or if you can see this picture. The side slopes on the patio where you can, there were alternatives and that's actually what they removed. Yeah, and, and the reason of course, and we had just mentioned it was that the sand was washing down onto the patio and it, and I'm not, I'm not sure, is there, a um, something in in there that if it's been there for 10 years as far as the patio part if it's been there for 10 years that that would be accepted or not the state has a there's a provision in the state statutes that says when a structure when a structure has been there for 10 years I can no longer take enforcement action against it, but it specifically says that it does not become a legal structure. Uh, essentially what it is is an illegal structure that I can't take action against. Once this was replaced, that 10 year window went away because now we're looking at a new structure. Okay. Well, and, and that's my request then is to have the patio stay and then also to have the wall stay, of course. And um, again, we didn't realize at the time that we did the work that we were not um, outside of that 75 feet mark because of where the last patio was, was placed. Okay, it's on mute. How long has the structure been there? The new one? Well, the new one was just put in at um, probably um, May of this year, approximately. May, June. May to June. Okay. Okay. And I'm actually sitting on it right now. If, I don't know if it matters if you guys can see it or want to see it. And then there's also pictures, I think that um, Jason from uh, Green's Garden had sent. Yeah. If you want to see him, he can. If you want to see him. Yeah. Yes, yeah. if yeah. possible. possible. 
We have the picture, I mean the video. Okay. I'm not sure if I can. Uh... <laughs> Oh, okay. I think they can see you. Okay, and you guys can see me okay? Not, not yet. You have to start video in the bottom left. Did you do that? Um, it says stop video, so I thought it was recording. Our shows that you don't... Weird. No, we're not seeing it. Okay. Good idea. I'll try and stop the video and restart it. Maybe if hopefully I don't yeah. lose you guys. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's try something else here. Yeah, that's still not working. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not. Yep, I don't know why it's not working, but. Well, the pictures, I mean, they do have the pictures. Okay. And like I mentioned, it's it's not a vacation or a summer home for us. It's a year round home. And we just want a place that we can gather for barbecues and so forth, just for our family. Jeff, I have a couple of questions. It's Rich. Uh, we, we have two pictures we're looking at. One, one shows a patio with kind of a, a bar set up out front, and the other picture shows the walls. Uh, is there two different things? So um, the one with, the, with that tiki bar thing, I actually right. had Jason take that out because that, of course, would have probably been illegal too, which we didn't know at the time. But... Um, so that's right. gone, and that is now just a grass area there. Okay. And I don't know if the other shows okay. it, but there is a, um, I guess the other one doesn't show it, but there's a beach area, and I'm eliminating that area where it's going to be uh, a grass again right up to the water. I'm not going to um, okay. keep the beach, and hopefully that – help some but those two areas um one was about eight by eight or eight by ten the other area i would guess is probably about 16 by 20. okay um so you're you're drawing it the it's going to be tweet wide is that correct yes yes i'm sorry the drawing what the drawing I have shows the the uh, the patio is going to be 28 feet wide. Yes, it, it is currently yes. This drawing is, is this your drawing? Oh, this is Jason's. He can tell you, I guess, on it. What is the question, what, sir? What's the size of the patio? Yeah. Um, you're going to be. Uh, 40 feet, six inches. 40 feet, six inches. No, I mean like area. Oh, total area? 13. How, how long by how wide? 40, 40 wide and some change by 15, eight. Yes, yeah, so that's the 28 and the, and the 12. Yeah. Right. So that goes all the way across and then it's... 13 feet deep towards the water uh 15 13, 10, 15 10 with uh where the the way the pillar kind of stands in there 13 feet deep. yeah 15 10 and the is that for a car with the pillars for that excuse me what what's the pillar for just aesthetics 
Just to what? Just for aesthetic purposes only. Aesthetic, okay. And is this going to be uh, concrete or gravel or what surface? It's already existing in uh, pavers. Pavers, okay. And we still have, of course, the, the sand and the rocks um, on each side of the, of the walls. Right. right, that's going to stay. Yes. So you're asking for, uh, uh, is, is two as we're talking here? One, the variance to the 75 feet, and the second is the wall? Well, yeah, you um, can treat them separately. Yeah. If that's what you're asking. They both need a variance to the ordinary high watermark. If you want to vote on the uh, retaining wall first and then the patio second or however, that would be fine. Yeah. My name's Lee Streifler. I'm one of the residents. Well, that seems to make more sense to me. My name's uh, Mr. Streifler, Streifler, I'm one we'll... of the residents on the block. Is it possible since I just got the letter just to see any of the pictures? All of that was available online. Okay. Um, if, are you looking at our video right now? I have pictures. I just, oh, there we go. Okay. If you can just raise it up just a bit. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you. Um, when he was talking about the tiki bar. Okay. Yeah, that's been eliminated. And then that's. The dimensional drawing. Okay. Uh, essentially, that's it. Okay. Nope. Thank you very much. So as the as the board knows, the criteria for a variance. You know, are there alternatives? Hardship, and can you get the intended use of the property without? Right. If you don't. If the board doesn't grant a variance, can you get the intended use of the property? And uh, I guess you probably would want to ask, see if anybody else is on there. Mr. Schreifler was logged in. He may want to speak. Um, yeah, you know, just, just my comments and why I wanted to, to see the pictures is, you know, we were out there over the weekend. Um, we had actually, you know, been on the water, went past the property. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, from a visual standpoint, um, it's extremely difficult to, uh, you know, notice any changes, notice that structure being back there without it specifically being pointed out. Um, you know, I, I don't have a lot of information about, you know, the exact measurements or anything like that, because obviously I would have had to go on his property. Um, but, you know, looking at it, I, you know, I don't see, I don't have any issues with it. Um, with the way that it's built at this present time, just because there's not much change from what I, what I've seen it in the past. Okay, according to the code, Area variances provide an increment of relief, normally small, from a physical dimensional restriction such as a building height, setback, and so forth. Okay. This is in the three variant, the three standards are unnecessary hardship due to conditions unique to the property and no harm to the public interest. It does meet the one, the second one, due to unique conditions of the property. Okay. But at least hearing from one neighbor, I, I, I think to uh, put both of these into, into one motion. And so I move to 
approve both the wall and the uh, encroachment on the 75 foot from the water. Need a second. I have a okay. Motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. All in favor? Okay. Uh, I have a question, Bob. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Go ahead. Are you saying are you saying that home is seventy five feet setback to your home? The is house is eighty feet. So now if you're adding if I'm reading this right, you you're adding fifteen feet, you're gonna be sixty feet. No, the house is eighty feet back from the lake. Okay. Try saying that again. All right. If I, I understood you said that your home is right at the 75 foot setback mark. The front no. of your home or the back of your home is right at the 75 foot setback. Well, is that correct? The, ho the home is at the 80 foot setback mark. So it would be approaching okay. 10 right. feet okay. on the. Okay. I was just rigging this picture on. Fine, thank you. Okay, I will second that motion. Aye. Aye. If you didn't hear that, Mr. Clark, they did approve it, three to zero. All right, thank you guys very much, and I appreciate it, thank you. All right, now we do have Make sure you contact our office so we can get some permits in place. Okay. okay. I'll talk to you later today, Dustin. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, the last application is for Michael and Heidi Murphy. Uh, that is another one that needs to go to the town. Uh, so a, tab a motion to table would be in order. I move we uh, table the Murphy application until next month until they get uh, town approval or, or town action. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. And that's all I have. I have no correspondence. No. Nope. September. What is it? September. September seventh. September seventh. Yes. First Monday in September. Yep. I second that. And that's. Aye.